Ralph Fiennes, the acclaimed British actor, has captivated audiences worldwide with his remarkable performances throughout his illustrious career. Renowned for his versatility and depth, Fiennes has seamlessly transitioned between diverse roles, showcasing his exceptional acting prowess. In this video, we will delve into the top 10 best Ralph Fiennes movies, exploring the cinematic masterpieces that have cemented his status as one of the most talented and iconic actors of our time. Starting off our list at number 10 is Coriolanus. Ralph Fiennes made his directorial debut with 2011's Coriolanus, an adaptation of William Shakespeare's eponymous tragedy. The film sees Fiennes play the titular character, a fearsome general who allies with his sworn enemy to destroy Rome after being expelled following a riot. Gerard Butler and Vanessa Redgrave also star. Coriolanus keeps the tragedy's traditional Roman context but places it in a pseudo-modern Southern European setting, resulting in an ambitious adaptation of one of Shakespeare's most underrated classics. Coriolanus received acclaim from critics, who praised Fine's choices and performance, the film's striking visuals, and the cast's supporting work. I will fight against my country. Coming in at number 9 is a bigger splash. A world-famous rock singer Marianne Lane Swinton is on holiday at an isolated villa on a small island with her filmmaker lover Paul Skernertz. She is recovering from surgery and has lost her voice. He is in recovery from alcohol addiction and a suicide attempt. But their solitude is broken when obnoxious music producer Harry Hawk comes by. With him is his daughter Penelope Johnson. Harry decides to dance provocatively to the Rolling Stones hit Emotional Rescue and ends up skinny dipping by the pool. Alas, Paul and Harry both start to fight while Paul holds Harry underwater too long and he drowns. Soon, the authorities stop by. You're insane. Everyone's obscene. That's the whole point. Next up at number 8 is The Menu. In The Menu, Slowick is one of the most successful chefs in the world. His exclusive restaurant is located on a remote island he owns, and his lavish menu is meticulously crafted according to the preferences of each of the selected guests that have money enough to afford a reservation. His reputation was arguably untouchable until he suddenly decided to vent his rage against the rich with a new menu filled with shocking surprises. Although Chef Slowick's motivations are solid and viewers almost find themselves rooting for the villain, his sadistic methods are actually quite scary, and his resolute attitude prevents anyone from changing his mind as he carries out a disturbing plan. Who are you? I am Margo. Why do you care? I have to know if you're with us, or with them. At number 7 we have the Constant Gardener. Justin Quayle Fiennes is a British diplomat and avid horticulturist, is confronted by Amnesty International activist Tessa during a lecture in London. They strike up a romance and marry after she accompanies him to his posting in Kenyan where she befriends Kenyan Dr. Arnold Bloom, leading to rumors of an affair. Tessa has no qualms confronting corruption, to the chagrin of his superiors and they lose a child late in her pregnancy. Connecting local deaths to trials of a new drug, conducted by Kenyan-based company 3Bs. She gives it to Justin's colleague Sandy Woodrow, the British High Commissioner, who sends it to S. Sir Bernard Pellegrin, head of the Africa desk at the Foreign Office. Sandy informs Justin that a white woman and a black driver were killed near Lake Turkana and that Tessa and Arnold shred a room before hiring a car. Justin and Sandy identify his wife's mutilated body. After Tessa's burial, he learns that Tessa kept Arnold's secret that he was gay, which is illegal in Kenya. The child's life, there are no rules to cover that! Taking the number six spot is in Bruges. Martin McDonough's specialty is playing with justice and morals like it's a disposable toy, which explains why in Bruges' main antagonist, Harry Waters, 
is supposedly the only person with principles in the film, which leads up to a hilarious punchline. In Bruges is a caustic black comedy about two hitmen and colleagues tricked by Harry to kill themselves. Harry proceeds to engage in a variety of horrific acts throughout the movie but insists that if he ever killed a child, he would take his own life. No one could count on the villain's stupidity in the end, when he accidentally kills an actor with dwarfism, mistakes him for a child, and shoots himself in the head. Alright folks, listen up. If you're enjoying the content on this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give the video a good old-fashioned thumbs up. Let's show the creator some love, shall we? Halfway through our list at number 5 is Quiz Show. In 1958, the questions and answers to be used for the latest broadcast of NBC's Quiz Show 21 are transported from a secure bank vault to the studio. The reigning champ is Queen's resident Herb Stempalter Turo. The producers on the show are surprised when Columbia University instructor Charles Van Fines, son of a prominent literary family, who wants to audition for Tic Tac Toe, a less difficult show by the same producers. Van Doren's game-winning streak make him a makes him a national celebrity. Meanwhile, Stempel, having lost his prize money to an unscrupulous bookie, starts legal action against NBC after weeks go by without his return to TV. The film was Oscar nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor in a Supporting Role for Schofield and the Best Screenplay based on already published material. I was involved, deeply involved in a deception. I have deceived my friends. Coming in at number 4 is the Harry Potter franchise. Voldemort, who lends his likeness and voice on screen appears in in every movie in the series with the exception of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. In Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Voldemort's manifestation is as a face on the back of Professor Quirrell's head. As in the book, he who must not be named is shown clad in dark black robes. He is tall and emaciated with no hair and yellowish teeth. His fingers are long and pale blue, and his eyes are blue so his evil wouldn't be seen and would not fill the audience with fear. As for Fines, he has stated that he had had two weeks to shoot the climatic showdown scene with Radcliffe's Harry. The actor said with a chuckle, I have no doubt children will be afraid of me now if they weren't before. Harry Potter. The boy who lived. Come to die. Breaking into the top three is the Grand Budapest Hotel. In this comedy drama, finds headlines while working with a slew of Anderson stalwarts as he plays Monsieur Gustave H. A famed concierge of a 20th century mountainside resort in a fictional Eastern European country of Zabrauka. When Gustav is framed for the murder of a wealthy dowager Swinton, he and his recently befriended protege Zero Rivolori embark on a quest for fortune and a priceless renaissance painting amidst the backdrop of a fascist regime. The film was nominated for nine Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, while picking up the gold for Best Original Score, Best Production Design, Best Makeup, and Hair Styling and Best Costume Design. I knew there was something fishy. We never got the cause of death. She's been murdered. And you think I did it. At number two, we have the English patient. Fines plays the title role as a man burned beyond recognition who speaks with a British accent. He recalls his history in a series of flashbacks, revealing his true identity to the audience, but not his caretaker about the love affair he had before his plane crashed. His French-Canadian combat nurse Hannah Binoche we learn at the end of the war. He does not reveal his identity to her. We learn that he that he is Laszlo Almasy, 
who is a Hungarian cartographer. His nurse decides to move into a bombed out monastery with her patient to make her patient more comfortable and they are joined by Lieutenant Kip, a Sikh sapper in the British Indian Army. Hannah and Kip shyly try out their feelings about each other. The English patient gave Fines a Best Supporting Oscar nomination. Uh, the rest meant nothing to me. And finally, taking the number one spot on our list is Schindler List. Fines was cast as a Mon Goth after Spielberg after he viewed some of his early films. In his audition, he said he saw sexual evil. It's all about subtlety adding that there were moments of kindness that move across his eyes and then instantly run cold. Fines packed on 28 pounds to play the role. He watched historic newsreels and talked to Holocaust survivors who knew Goth. The actor said about his real-life character, saying I got close to his pain. Inside him is a fractured, miserable human being. According to some doctors, Goth is a classic psychopath. Fines looked so much like Goth in his costume, a cast member got freaked out by his appearance on the set. The actor earned a supporting actor nomination. The Holocaust drama won Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Original Score, Best Film Editing, Best Cinematography and Best Art Direction. I bought the new. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Fiennes' remarkable body of work spans a diverse range of genres and roles, each showcasing his unparalleled acting prowess, from his haunting portrayal of Nazi war criminals to his captivating interpretations of literary and historical figures, Fines has consistently delivered performances that captivate audiences and cement his status as one of the greatest actors of our time. This comprehensive guide to his top 10 best movies serves as a testament to the depth and breadth of his cinematic achievements, solidifying his place as a true master of the craft. <laughs>